In ages long past, in a remote corner of the Matoran universe, an island is engulfed by civil strife. This would prove to be the catalyst for the Dark Hunters to gain another member to their ranks, in much the same fashion as the home island of the organization's two founders. Injured and forgotten, a form is found and restored to health by, at the time, a still ragtag bunch of outcasts. Forged by betrayal, the being codenamed Guardian was put to use eliminating any operatives who would spill Dark Hunter secrets. Accustomed to betrayal, for it was treachery by one of his own clan that led to his misfortune. This creature, given new purpose, saw to it that any Dark Hunters captured by the Brotherhood of Makuta would remain silent when put under interrogation. Guardian's activities during the Dark Hunter Brotherhood War evidently did not go unnoticed by the latter's leader. When paired on a mission with the Toa Nuva, the Hunter's operations against the Makuta were over. Beneath his feet, the ground opened, bonds made of solid stone wrapped around him, yanking him down into the hole even as he screamed. Then the barren earth slammed shut again, and he was gone. Guardian knew better than anyone what it was like to be betrayed, and had experienced it firsthand, nearly at the cost of his own life, and in his later career would work to ensure the same would not happen to the group he called his new home. Our next hunter's origin is obscured by mystery and contradiction, for the being who tells us of it keeps changing his story, but we can narrow it down to one a likely scenario. Knowledge of what Tracker was before coming a Dark Hunter is likely lost, for his current state is so far removed from what it once was, mutated beyond recognition by Hordika Venom, seemingly at the behest of Rudaka for unknown reasons. Tracker's hatred for both the Vizorak and their Vortex Queen was absolute and unwavering. His abilities were, as his codename tells us, excellent tracking abilities, assisted by his pet bull. Tracker would prove his title by tracking Rudaka to Metrinui following her defeat there, almost being killed by him, but was restrained by other Dark Hunters. His skills would be put to use by the Dark Hunters to try and locate the Pariah Makuta Spiria as part of their organization's universe-spanning war. He would end up being beaten to his quarry by Makuta Miserix. Thematically similar to Tracker, we have the Dark Hunter Seeker, however instead of joining the Dark Hunters to combat the Brotherhood of Makuta, Seeker was a former servant of them. Instead of making Rudaka the focus of his search, it was the Kanoe Yavoki, for Seeker's job was to guard it on Destral following Kojol's theft of the mask. When the Toa Haga staged a raid on Destral and was successful in recovering it, Seeker was cast out of the Brotherhood for his failure to protect the mask. Being merely cast out of the Brotherhood might seem quite a lenient punishment by the Makuta, perhaps he wasn't seen as enough of a danger to dispose of permanently, like outcast members. Either way, Seeker joined with the Dark Hunters to try and fulfil his goal, and reclaim the Mask of Light. And so we have another Dark Hunter recruit with a myopic focus on one specific goal, hoping to strike back at the Brotherhood and Makuta that had wronged them. It is said however that knowing Seeker's possession of the Evoki would like the result in attempting to leave the organisation, the Shadowed One keeps all information on it and the Toahaga's whereabouts in mystery, for the Hunter's skills are useful to him. It is not unusual to have someone join the Dark Hunters in furtherance of their own aims and ambitions. Seeker is one such being, and only time will tell if he makes the unwise decision to try and quit after he achieves his goal. Any attempt by Seeker to leave the Dark Hunters, by the organisation's own rules, would of course necessitate his death. Seeker saw the Dark Hunters as a chance to see the world, hoping he would be sent to new lands he'd never before visited, in the hopes that one of them might just play home to the mask he so fiercely desired. The next hunter on this list illuminates a certain running theme. Falling victim to the Vizorak Scourge is something many rogues have in common, for Primal is one such being who found their land fall under the unrelenting tide of the Vizorak. Leading a small resistance against the invaders, Primal may have been able to trade stories with Order of Matinui member Tobduk, had he chosen a different path. Instead, Primal was recruited by the Shadowed One into the Dark Hunter ranks, where he displayed a strong sense of justice. He rejected all offers of biomechanical enhancements, save for a paralysis weapon, ironically not too dissimilar from what the Vizorak possessed, and from then on served the Dark Hunter cause, often as a lone operative, for his code of honour sometimes led him to kill his assigned partners. Alongside a more rounded sense of morality than his fellow Dark Hunters, Primal liked to collect trophies from his hunts, and refused missions that were unlikely to yield him any. Similarly to Primal, we have Gatherer, another trophy enthusiast. 
like other dark hunters Subterranean and Savage, started out in life as an Onumatoran who became a dark hunter not necessarily by choice when the organisation came to his island. Many beings are drawn to the life of a dark hunter by the potential for profit and adventure, or simply to escape the life they had been living before. Others, like Gatherer, were pulled into the organisation by force and given no choice about remaining. He was one member of the strike team sent to capture Toa Varian for the Shadowed One, not before being modified so that his need for sleep or sustenance was nullified. His current appearance is a result of his taking of trophies from defeated foes and adding it to himself, visibly transforming him from mere Matorin to the towering form he takes today. With these Dark Hunters I was drawn to examples of members who joined not so much out of love for the organisation, rather they saw it as a means to an end, a form of protection through which they could accomplish personal goals, and in some cases, resembled something quite noble once, holding a hatred of Makuta equal to any tower or Order of Matanui member. Let me know some of your favourite Dark Hunter origin background stories in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.